This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at the world of hedge accounting. One of the more complicated areas of the syllabus, I'd say. Uh, but even though it's complicated, we do really only just touch the surface of it. It gets so much more complicated in the real world. So as tough as you find it at P2, whoa, yeah, out there in the real world, it takes on a whole new meaning, okay? Uh, so the key bit here is to ensure that you are genuinely happy with the basics and understand first of all what hedging is and then you're happy with this process of hedge accounting because again, it's another weird and wacky, wonderful world of accounting. So what we've got in terms of hedge accounting, we're just gonna go through and look at a little introduction. Uh, so what we have there, Let's just first of all think about what hedging is. And I think the key thing about hedging is trying to manage risk. What we're going to try and do with regards to hedging is you're trying to fix an amount either within the financial statements or fix an amount that is going to arise within the financial statements at some point in the future. Because within a company's financial statements, there will be items so whether they are assets or whether they are liabilities that are going to fluctuate in value so the examples that we mentioned up there you could have overseas balances so whether that's a receivable whether that's the a payable uh, that overseas receivable and payable balance is going to go up and down as the exchange rates move you could have a tradable instrument uh, whether that is a tradable financial asset uh, or a tradable financial liability, so a debt instrument, as the market rates change, so whether that's the, the market prices of the shares, whether that's the rate of interest uh, on the open market, which will impact the fair value of your debt instrument, the fair value is going to change, isn't it? And if you get a change in fair value, what do we get? Yeah, gains and losses, don't we? Okay. Uh, it could be there as well. Uh, that you've got something that's going to arise in the future, so future cash flows. So it could be that you've got variable rate borrowings, in which case there, as the rate of interest change, you will either pay more or less on your borrowings. Uh, you could have the purchase of an asset in a foreign currency. And if you purchase an asset in a foreign currency, then again, as time elapses, uh, things will change with regards to the exchange rates. And therefore, you will pay more or you will pay less for that asset in the future. And as things change, we pay more, we pay less. As fair values go up, as fair values go down, that introduces volatility, doesn't it? And as it introduces volatility, that introduces risk. And we need to manage that risk. OK, let's not get involved in the financial management side and whether or not as the financial accountant as the financial director of the business, we should actually be managing the risk in this so-called fashion of hedging. Maybe the shareholders have already gone through and mitigated their risk with the portfolio of different investments, but let's not concern ourselves with that. We're focusing on P2, we're focusing on what hedging is and then the accounting for hedging. Uh, so we have risk, we have variability. Uh, we don't like variability within our accounts because that means profits will fluctuate. Uh, based on things that are not within our control, potentially, such as the, the exchange rates, uh, the share prices and the market rates of interest. So what happens with regards to hedging is that we go through there and we use a financial instrument. OK, uh, that financial instrument is usually a derivative bet, OK, uh, whereby you bet on whatever your fear may be. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, but you enter into a, a derivative contract, okay? Uh, so whether that's a future, whether that's an option, uh, you could go through and have non-derivative, but I'm not too worried about that for the time being. Think about derivatives, futures options, and also potentially a forward contract, okay? You've touched upon forwards in a bit of detail in F9. Futures and options, you've seen them briefly. Uh, if you want to see them in more detail numerically, you'll see them in P4. The examiner is aware of our limitations with regards to the numbers of futures and options, so there wouldn't ever be anything too complicated within the exam. Uh, and what happens is by entering into this financial instrument, hopefully that should then mitigate any gains and losses that you have on your item. Okay, so it reduces the variability. So if 
let's just say the fair value changes on your item and you make a gain, the way in which hedging should work is that the instrument should generate you a loss. Okay, hopefully an equal loss. And as you net off the gain and losses, that will fix the price. Okay, yeah, that's what we're trying to aim to reduce the risk. We reduce the risk by fixing the price in the future. Okay, or fixing the price today. Okay, that is the aim. Okay, that's what hedging is. Everybody happy with that? If not, go back and, and listen to it all again. Okay, have a look at some notes and make sure you, that you're happy with the process. Yeah, the key is we're trying to fix price. We're trying to reduce the risk, so reduce the volatility, the variability in returns. And by doing that, uh, we look at the item and we enter into a derivative financial instrument. Uh, if we make gains and losses on the item, we will then make losses and gains that offset equally on the derivative. Okay, remember a derivative a future option it is just a bet okay bet on a particular outcome okay bets you either win or lose if i have a place a bet i tend to lose but, but, but that's part of the course uh so what we've got there with regards to hedge accounting now note this okay we're specifically looking at the accounting so what do we do with the gains and losses uh hedge accounting is what we do specifically okay it is a specific process uh, that matches the change in value of the instrument to the change in value or the change in future cash flow of that item that is either in or will potentially be within the financial statements. OK, and when we look at the matching, we're going to match those gains and losses either in profit or loss. Or in other comprehensive income. So as we will see the different types of hedge accounting that exist uh, will all depend there. Uh, whether or not we take gains and losses to profit or loss or gains and losses to other comprehensive income on the item and the instrument. OK, uh, that's key. OK, it, it's a specific matching process. And what you need to understand going forward is that hedging has its own specific rules. It goes against any other rules that we have with regards other accounting standards. So. Quick test. Inventory. How do we value inventory? Brilliant. The lower of cost and NRV. So if there was no hedging, uh, and that's how you'd value inventory. However, if you try to protect the value of your inventory in a specific hedge accounting transaction, forget IS2. It no longer exists. OK, there will be separate rules within hedge accounting. That's why it's difficult. Uh, other bits that come to mind. Derivatives. How do we go through there and recognize the change in fair value of a derivative? Excellent. You've remembered something. Brilliant. Yeah, the change in fair value of a derivative yeah, goes through profit or loss. It does if it's just a derivative purely for speculative purposes. So you've just entered into a future just as a bit of a bet to hope that you will make lots of money. You'll make lots of gains. OK. However, if you've taken out that derivative to specifically go through there as a hedging transaction, forget those rules. There are separate rules under hedge accounting that were right at the very top that we've gone through there and highlighted. Hedge accounting has its own separate rules. OK. Have I made that clear? Hopefully. OK, a couple of nods, a couple of blank faces. OK, yeah, excellent. Put the mobile phone down. Stop playing with it. Concentrate. OK, this is tough stuff. Uh, so that's hedge accounting. OK, it's a specific matching uh, of change in value of the instrument, the item in profit or loss or other comprehensive income. We can't have something go through profit or loss with something else going through other comprehensive income. They need to be in the same place. OK. So let's summarise. What have we got? OK. So you can see it there. Uh, I've drawn it up diagrammatically, if you so wish. Uh, as part of hedge accounting, there's three things. Uh, first thing that we need is a hedge item. OK, so we need the item. That is the specific item that is exposed to fluctuations. So risks and change of the fair value or changes in a future cash flow. OK, uh, we will need to account for that item. Uh, the hedging instrument is the second thing that we need. OK, uh, and that is a financial instrument, usually a derivative 
whose value changes uh, to offset the gains and the losses uh, on the fair value or the gains and the losses of the cash flows uh, of that designated hedged item. Okay. Uh, and what happens is that hedging instrument protects the hedged item against the hedge risk. Okay. So that's hedge risk is all covered within IFRS 7 or your disclosures. So there'll be a separate lecture there on IFRS 7. It won't be too exciting, let me tell you that now. Uh, but that hedge risk is the specific risk. So that's going through there and thinking, is there any foreign currency risk? Uh, is there any interest rate risk? Or is there a risk attached to, say, a commodity? Okay, uh, Whether that be cocoa, whether that be silver, whether that be gold, uh, they all fluctuate in price, don't they? We're going to keep it simple. Okay, uh, there are some things in the real world that will be subject to more than one risk. Okay, Ooh, yeah, uh, that gets complicated. Yeah, we're going to just look whereby there is just one risk. Okay, so it will either be price risk or interest rate risk or foreign currency risk. It could be that you are, say, a UK company, uh, you are looking to go through there and try and hedge against. Uh, Maybe the price of your jet fuel, say. Uh, that jet fuel may be denominated in dollars, okay? Uh, and the price of jet fuel fluctuates as well as, if you like, the, the price of crude oil as your commodity fluctuates. Uh, so the, the risk there with regards to the price on your commodity, i.e. the crude oil that goes into making jet fuel, uh, kerosene. Uh, and then what you've got there as well, isn't it? There is also a foreign currency risk. So, oh, that's why it gets complicated because there's two risks. So, yeah, you have your hedged item. You might need two hedging instruments. Here, we're just going to look at back-to-back -back hedging. Yeah, one item, one instrument, and one risk. Okay, beyond that, eh, 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 not even at P2. I could envisage a situation as complicated as that. Uh, what we're going to go through and touch upon... Uh, once we finish this introduction, is we're going to look at the specific hedge accounting that we have. Uh, there are two specific types of hedge accounting, fair value and cash flow. Uh, presumably, fair value is whereby you're trying to protect the fair value of your specific item. Uh, and cash flow is where you are trying to predict or protect, I should say, uh, the specific future cash flow with a specific hedging instrument. That's something that's key. Uh, you need to look at your specific item and the specific instruments. Okay, You can't just chop and change on various instruments that you may have in your financial statements. A specific derivative will be hedged you against uh, that specific item. Okay, Excellent. You can't just chop and change to see which one works best. Okay, uh, So let's go through. Uh, just top things up, okay, in terms of hedge accounting. I think we've already spoken, haven't we? And maybe you can understand a bit clearer now uh, what hedge accounting is. Uh, remember, we said it's the specific matching uh, of the instrument to the change in the value uh, of a specific item, which is either fair value or future cash flow, okay? Key bit, which I've just added, just that note at the side. Uh, it's only relevant, however, when the gains and losses on both the instruments and the item are recognised either in different periods. Uh, so one is recognised this year and one is not recognised until a later date. Uh, or it's within different financial statements. So maybe there's a gain in one on profit or loss and the other goes through OCI. It doesn't match up, does it? We'd like them either in both OCI or both profit or loss. Or both this year as opposed to one this year and one some point in the future. Uh, when there's an accounting mismatch. Okay, that, that's the key word. So let's just have a look at an illustration, shall we? Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is it says Murphy Inc. is contracted to buy 1 million oranges in three months' time. It's a lot of oranges, isn't it? Maybe they, they make orange juice. Okay. That would require lots of oranges, wouldn't it? Uh, there's concern about the value of the purchase fluctuating due to the uncertainty around the weather impacting the harvest. So if it's good weather, maybe there'll be lots and lots and lots of oranges produced. If there's lots and lots of oranges produced, maybe there's an oversupply in the market. So the price goes down. OK, so you buy your oranges cheaper. Hurrah. Uh, if the weather's bad, uh, maybe there is a poor produce of oranges. So a poor supply, not many on the market. So therefore, uh, people will be prepared to pay more to get the oranges because there are less of them about. Oh, we can't do that, can we? 
that's going to push our prices up and down isn't it there's going to be lots of volatility okay so what we're going to go through and do is we're going to try and fix the price of oranges if we can do that that will be great okay uh, it says the current price is 0.2 million dollars okay uh, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and fix it at that 0.2 million dollars you might fix it at a different price you might fix it at a little bit higher but we're going to keep it simple okay uh, so that we have gone through there and entered into a futures contract. So that is a bet uh, whereby that bet will say that the price of your oranges is 0.2 million dollars in three months time. OK, so we are betting that it will be 0.2 million. OK, uh, it will either win or it will lose. OK, depending upon what the price of the oranges actually turns out to be. So what's going to happen? Let's think about the fluctuations and how things go up and down. OK, so what you've got, if there's no hedge accounting, that's what we're going to look at first. You have a futures contract, don't we? We spoke before I asked you the question, how do we treat a futures contract? It's a derivative. You said correctly, hopefully uh, the gains and losses go through profit or loss. Key bit, however, is that goes through at each reporting date. So it goes through at each different period doesn't it we've got three months so imagine uh our reporting date straddles that three month period either it's after one month two months yeah not the three months and the issue that you're going to have is that every month or at the year end you're going to report a gain or loss on the future aren't we it goes through profit or loss what do we have with regards to the oranges nothing zero zip the nada nil yeah there's nothing in there is there so you've got this futures going up and down yeah, you've got a gain or loss. If it's a gain, it looks great, doesn't it? But, okay, you're actually using that gain to offset the loss that you're going to make on the oranges. Uh, so you have an accounting mismatch, don't we? Because you recognise the purchase of oranges when it occurs. You'll either pay more or less for the oranges. That's when you realise the gain or loss on the item. The gain or loss on the instrument goes through in different accounting periods, doesn't it? So what you've got there is an accounting mismatch, isn't it? Okay. Uh, we want the gains or losses to appear within the same financial statements or in the same periods. Uh, here, I think it would be better if they appeared in the same period, wouldn't it? Mm. So the purchase takes place in the future. When that transaction arises, that might be good then to recognise the gains and the losses. So, in summary, what we've got with regards to there being no hedge account. Remember, no hedge accounting is taking place just yet. Okay. Uh, if the value of the oranges increase. And um, the company pays more for the goods. So we've made a loss, haven't we, on the oranges because we've had to pay more. What should happen there is that we then make a gain on the future when we contract it out. OK, or when we close it out, close out the contract. Uh, why do we make a gain on the future? Well, when you look at your future, you you place a bet, don't we? Uh, we place a bet on your fear. Uh, and here, when you're looking at a hedge with a future cash flow your fear when you're making the purchase is that the purchase price will go up in value won't it okay so you're looking at a fear of a rise in prices if you place a bet on your fear you're essentially saying look the price of oranges is going to increase that's the risk isn't it okay you're placing a bet on the risk the risk is that the price goes up so if you place your bet and say, look, I bet that the price will goes up. This is where the magic happens, because if the price goes up, OK, you've got a loss on the purchase of the oranges. So a loss on the item. But you win your bet, OK, because you placed a bet on the price is going up and they have gone up. So although you've made a loss on the purchase of oranges, you make a gain on the actual instrument, your financial instrument, your derivative your bet okay so the gain and the loss should offset okay uh, however as it stands those gains that you have on the future will go through profit or loss with no hedging on a on a monthly basis or at the end of each reporting period okay so there's an accounting mix match we want to see the gain on the instrument match up to the loss on the item at the same point in time Similarly, uh, we've still got the same future in this second scenario. Uh, so remember, the fear, the risk was that the price increases. So we are worried that the price is going to increase. So we place a bet on the price increasing. 
Now, if the price actually goes down, brilliant, because we've got a gain then on the purchase of the oranges because we bought them cheaper. However, you've lost your bet. OK, so what's going to happen is you're going to get losses on your bets, you know, losses on the future. So losses on the instrument that go through profits or loss with no hedge accounting. But they go through on a periodic basis at the end of each reporting period, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, when we don't recognize the gain on the, the goods, the purchase of the oranges until it actually happens. So again, you've got this accounting mismatch. OK, we need to do something about it. What are we going to do? Hedge accounts. OK, we're going to adopt a specific policy of hedge accounting. OK, yeah, the hedge worked theoretically, didn't it? OK, we now need to look at the accounting. OK, uh, so what you've got there, the futures contract, this is where the difference is. Look at it. I'll put it in bold. I'll highlight it because you are specifically hedging. Yeah, that futures contract, the gains or losses, because there was a mismatch and things went through profit or loss. And if you've got lots of gains going through profit or loss, it's good. If you've got lots of losses through profit or loss, it's bad. What we do is we hide them away. Where do we hide them away? In that bottom bit. Every statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. That dumping ground, otherwise known as other comprehensive income. You know, it, it's not yet been realised, has it? Okay. Although physically, legally on the market, it could be if you were to close it out. You're not going to close it out until you buy the oranges, are we? So effectively, you're sitting on a gain, you're sitting on a loss, a little bit like your gain on a revaluation of PPE. You know, you put that into OCI. Okay, here, whether it's a gain or a loss, yeah, you're sitting on the gain, you're sitting on a loss. It goes to other comprehensive income because you're hedging specifically. Okay, and then what happens? You buy the oranges in the future, and then that gain or loss that's hidden within other comprehensive income. What will then go through and happen is that will then be transferred to profit or loss. When it's transferred to profit or loss, if you've got there your cheaper purchase of oranges, yeah, you will go through there and have had a gain on the purchase of oranges, but there will be a loss on the future. So that loss gets added to the cost of the oranges. If you bought the oranges and the oranges have gone up in price, you have a higher cost, but don't forget that cost will then get reduced by the gain that you've made on the future. OK, and that's about as simple as what we can keep it. OK, uh, it gets really complicated in the real world. Businesses still make losses, don't they? Or, or even when they hedge, if you think of the likes of all the airplane companies, EasyJet, Ryanair, British Airways, Emirates, Etihad, uh, you name them. They enter into hedging contracts they take out derivatives to try and fix the price of their fuel if the price of fuel fluctuates uh that they might have to pass the changes on to the customer okay you or i we don't want to pay lots of money to fly do we? we like to fly as cheaply as possible okay i'd like to fly most expensively as possible i'd like to get on the plane and turn left and walk to the front and sit in first class but that's not going to happen okay get on turn right sit there squashed up okay uh, unless you're on one of those big A380s, there's a bit of space on those, isn't there? OK, a lot more space at the front, but let's not worry about that. Where was I? What was I? Yes. What was I talking about? Yeah, these companies will hedge. They fix the price. But even though they fix the price, they can still lose out overall, particularly in, in, in the recent last year or so. Uh, there's been an oversupply of oil, hasn't there? OK, uh, and because of that, the price of oil, crude oil has gone down. So that's made jet fuel a lot cheaper. But what these businesses have done is they fix the price. They fix the price here. So that's what they're paying. But the market price is actually there. OK, so if they'd not have hedged, it would be more beneficial because it would have been cheaper. So some of the profitability has been impacted because they've hedged. But it mitigates the risk, doesn't it? Because if that's where you've hedged your price at, if the prices go up, then it is beneficial, isn't it? OK, so in the long term, it should be beneficial, but you may lose out in the short term okay so just be aware if you're reading articles in the news uh, you do see sometimes when these listed airline companies publish their results they talk about uh, they've made not as much profit because of their hedging and they've made losses on the hedging hedging effectively nets off the gains and losses but because you fixed it at a price which is above the market value that you would have paid it makes it a bit more expensive and, and it's therefore a loss okay yeah it's complicated isn't it okay 
Uh, it's complicated, it's costly, you just need to understand the basics within the exam, the basics of what we've covered there. If you're not happy with it, go through, listen to the video again, okay, right from the start, right to the end, up to now, okay, and then hopefully, yeah, the more you watch it, the happier you become with it. We'll then talk about the different types of hedge in the following videos, apply it, and then you can start looking at some past exam questions, okay. That's it for now. I'll see you all in the next video when we begin to look at the specific types of hedge accounting available under the accounting standards.